Hi, and welcome to Music with Martha. Today, I am going to talk about glass. And glass is not the first thing we think about when we talk about musical instruments or what material instruments are made out of. Um, but glass does have some musical properties. And I'm gonna start with talking about a glass bottle. So a bottle can be played the same way you play a flute, by blowing air across the hole. Um, and it sounds somewhat thing like this. It may take you um, a few practices, a few tries, but if you look in a mirror, that can help because you really want to blow air across the bottle and not into the bottle. So. <laughs> So I have an empty bottle and it makes a fairly low sound. And we talk about how instruments, the bigger the instrument, the lower the sound, the smaller the instrument, the higher the sound. And that's why a piccolo plays very high notes and a tuba plays very low notes. But I can't really change the shape of my bottle. Um, and if you listen, there are a lot of crows, I think, outside. <laughs> so hopefully I'm, they're gonna be quiet in a minute, but they're making their own music. Um, so I have a bottle. I can't really change the shape of my bottle. It's true that bottles come in different sizes. So I could get a bigger bottle, I could get a smaller bottle um, and make a sound. But instead, I'm going to pour some water into my bottle. I'm gonna use a funnel so I don't make a mess, All right? And I'm gonna pour in, let's say, let's do about half of the bottle, okay? Now I've put some water in my bottle, right? And I have changed the volume of air. So an empty bottle, it was all air, it was full of air, and now it's only about half full of air. So I've made the volume smaller, therefore I should get a higher sound. All right, so I do, I make a higher sound. Now I'll pour in a little bit more. And I know for a fact that the fuller the bottle, the harder it is to play. So we'll see how I do with air up to, let's see, can you see how full it is now? So like I said, it's a little harder um, to to play, to, to blow air, air across the hole um, when there's less air volume inside. All right, so let's empty that out. All right, so now I have my empty bottle again. All right, so I have an empty. I have... All right, so I'm going to line them up so I have, let's see if I can tip this down a little bit. Move, maybe let's move my camera back a little bit farther. All right, so now you see I have empty um, a little bit and a little bit more. You see the difference? I didn't change it that much, but I pitched these. bottles. So kind of a glass harmonica. Now if I had bigger hands or some tape, I could hold them all three. Let 
maybe play notes a little bit faster. All right, so bottles, glass bottles, and it's sort of a harmonica. Um, and I've lined them up low note to my left, high note to my right, like a piano is set up or a glockenspiel, a xylophone. Um, and you can experiment with bottles at home. And again, if you're having trouble, because sometimes you want to look at what you're doing, so your eyes go down and therefore your mouth goes toward the hole. If you look at a mirror, like I'm looking in the camera, and kind of make an ooh sound rather than an ooh sound. We're not blowing, we're not blowing out candles. Doesn't really work. More an ooh sound. But you don't have to make sound. You're only blowing. And the edge of the bottle will go just under your lip. So you might have to experiment with tipping the bottle a little bit or moving it up and down on your lip to get the right sound. So that's a glass bottle. And we've made sort of a harmonica. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put some links to other videos in the comments or in the description. In the description, I'll put some links to other um, videos. Um, though I'm not that familiar with YouTube, maybe I'll have to put them in the comments. Um, so that you can see some other examples of glass being used as a uh, musical instrument. So the next thing I want to talk about is a, I have a glass here. Um, and this glass is leaded crystal or lead crystal. So it's a very thin glass and the, it has its own uh, musical properties. All right, so I'm just tapping it with my fingernail. I don't want to hit it too hard because the glass is very thin and it could easily break. All right, so it has a bell sound. Now, I do have a smaller glass. And because there isn't as much of a bell of the rounded part of the glass, the drinking part, it's higher but it doesn't have as much glass to vibrate to create the pretty bell sound. So I'm not gonna use that one, All right? But here we have leaded crystal. Now the other cool thing about crystal is I can, I'm gonna, here I'll do this so you can, let me just use this glass because then you can see. I'm gonna put some water in here. I'm gonna get my finger, I'm gonna make sure my finger's pretty clean, wipe it on the towel, and then I'm gonna dip it in the water. And it may take a minute for this to get started, but we're gonna make the crystal sing. All right, by just rubbing my finger around the edge of the glass. Now, if I do the same thing, if I pour some water into this glass, and eventually it won't really vibrate because the water will be holding the glass still. All right. So there are people, and again, I'll put some links in the description, or if you're watching on Google Classroom, um, you can just go to the next slides and I'll have some um, videos pulled up ready for you to watch. And people will put lots of glasses in different sizes with different amounts of water in them. And they will tune them. They will set it up like a xylophone and play what they call a glass harp is typically what it's called. But Benjamin Franklin invented what's called a glass harmonica. And that's harmonica with the, uh, without the H, an harmonica. And what he figured out was instead of using glasses of filled with different amounts of water, he took different sized glass 
just the bowl part. And he, he made them different sizes and linked them up onto a rod that spins um, using your foot to make the pedal go. Um, if you're familiar with a treadle sewing machine, same principle. Um, your feet go up and down and it makes the, um, the, the rods spin and the glasses spin and then you just use your fingers. And again, I'll put links into the description or in Google Classroom um, to other um, videos that demonstrate a glass harmonica um, in, in use in a piece and also um, just demonstrating how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna kind of dry this out and we'll go back to the, um, it really does sing when it's empty because there's a lot of glass to vibrate. All right, um, thanks so much for watching and um, look for the next video. Bye-bye. So here's a little bonus for you. I wanted to demonstrate something. I have three of the cut crystal glasses that look exactly the same. They appear to be the same size, um, right? But because these are hand blown and hand cut, you can see this design is actually cut into the glass. So there's glass missing where, I mean, it's still a solid glass because it's not gonna leak when I pour water in it. Um, but if I run my finger across it, I can feel where the glass has been removed to make the design. And what happens is that just demonstrates that each glass has a different amount of, is made out of a different amount of glass. And it's possible that um, one is thinner than the other. The one that makes the higher note is thinner. It, the sound waves go faster. Um, it could also mean that the glass cutter um, removed a little more of the glass um, in making the design. And so if I had a number of glasses um, that were hand, handmade crystal in order to make a glass harp, I would have to spend a lot of time tuning each one because I'm going to demonstrate that if I pour more water into this one, okay, now the difference when we talked about the glass bottles earlier is the, amount of, the volume of air. More air means a lower sound. Right, and then we decreased the air volume in the glass in the bottle and made the sound higher. But in the glass, because the more water halts the vibrations, it stills the vibrations. So that means the vibrations slow down. So it should make a lower sound. So ah, uh, but now I have created even though this one is almost full half with filled halfway with water. It's the same sound and that was just luck. All right? But this one has more glass to vibrate. All right? So it is going to be higher than this one, but interesting that the empty one prove that it's empty. Okay, it had a little water in it, but it's basically empty. just goes to show that it would take a lot of tuning, right? And that now these have about the same, the same principles, the same musical principles, even though this one's empty. So let's pour a little bit of, a, of this one out. All right, and now those two are about the same, but this one had a higher sound to start with. And so now, even though it has a little more water, or about the same amount of water, it's gonna sound different. Let's see, how did I do? Pretty good. It's still higher. But I think I did skimp a little bit. Let's see if we can get it exact, hmm? Just because we're gonna try. And these are still higher. And this one, 
because these have less glass. And just to prove that that's actually working, let's do this one. Um, yeah. tell when I was pouring water in it actually changed the pitch as it was ringing. Let's see if I can try that again just so you can hear it. To be really quiet. All right thanks so much for listening and watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.